So in this video, we're going to uh, introduce, introduce to some of the connective tissues that we're going to be learning about in lab. Um, connective tissue is a, a really um, a diverse tissue type, um, things ranging from blood to bone to cartilage to fat. And, and it seems like those tissues are very different. Um, but the truth is that they all share one sort of set of common features, and, and that is that connective tissue will have typically loosely arranged cells surrounded by uh, an extracellular matrix. So all the space outside and between these cells is referred to as this extracellular matrix. And it's within that matrix you're going to be finding various fibers um, as well as this stuff called ground substance that we'll talk about more in lecture. And it's really the types of cells, the types of fibers, the, the components of the ground substance that really determines the type of connective tissue. So bone and blood, very different in their overall features, and that's because of these differences in types of fibers and types of ground substance material. But for today, we're going to be focusing on six, which are referred to as these connected tissue propers, these fibrous connected tissue. Carnotic cartilage and bone and blood, we'll hold off and do when we do with the respective uh, systems later. All of these today, we're going to be trying to identify the, the appropriate or relevant cell type as well as the types of fibers that you'll find spread throughout. And so in this first example here, this is referred to as loose areolar CT. This is really thought of as a very generic connective tissue. It's, it's the packing, it's the, it's the supportive tissue that often surrounds organs or is actually underneath um, the epithelial tissue we learned about. Um, and, and so one of the features of areolar CT is it's, it's loosely packed cells with very loosely sort of randomly arranged fibers. Um, it typically contains multiple cell types and all the fibers um, that you'd find in CT. And so if we start to look around, we'll notice there's a bunch of nuclei. And most of these nuclei represent what are called fibroblasts. And fibroblasts are the, the most common um, type of cell associated with connective tissue. And, and some of the features, they have very prominent nuclei the cytoplasm doesn't really show up very well. You just really see nuclei. And the other thing is, you'll notice in a lot of these, there's a nice dark black dot inside the nucleus. And that's the nucleolus. And, and that's a feature that, that you, you were asked to learn as it associated with cells in general. This is a cell type where it's really prominent and easy to see. Um, and so the fibroblasts are the cells that are, are actually maintaining this extracellular matrix. They're producing the fibers. They're producing the ground substance. And they happen to be nice, loosely packed in this, in this view. Um, the other cell type that we can see here, you'll notice this cell down here and this one, and then there's a few up top. The, these are called mast cells. They're pretty large cells. You tend to be able to see the nucleus as well as the cytoplasm. But really the feature that should be most apparent are, are all these small little granules. And, and it's these small granules that actually contain um, uh, things called like histamines and heparin. And, and these are compounds associated with inflammation. And, and so mast cells are, are cells associated with allergies and inflammation. And it's because of their ability to release these compounds that will induce this localized inflammation. They're commonly associated with this loose areolar CT. This is the type of connective tissue that we typically find directly below the, the epidermis on the surface of our skin. The types of fibers we see here, you'll notice there are two different types of fibers. There are these very thin, black, stringy fibers. These are elastic fibers. Elastic fibers, as the name suggests, are quite elastic. They can stretch and snap back. Pretty important when you think about the, the layer of tissue supporting our, our skin. Um, the other type of fiber here are these thicker, kind of wavier, kind of lighter purple. These thicker fibers, this is collagen probably arguably the most common protein we have in our body. And, and the collagen fibers in this field of view are also pretty loosely packed. Um, it turns out there is a third type of fiber that would be present in areolar CT. It's called reticular fibers. We typically can't see those because they, they require a special stain. And so normally, if you can see collagen and you can see elastic, you're not going to see the reticular fibers very well. But we'll see a slide here in a moment of those. And so loose areolar CT is just this very loose kind of nice packing supportive CT. It's typically dominated by fibroblasts. You're often gonna find a lot of mast cells and all of the different types of fibers will be present. Now in this next slide, this is one that, that may be set up as a demonstration for you. There, there is a third common cell type that you'll find in, in loose areolar CT and those are referred to as plasma cells. And plasma cells are, are 
the ones that, that synthesize and, and release antibodies associated with our immune system. Um, now, the difficult thing about these is, is they're hard to find, and so we're actually not going to ask you to find them. We will set up a demonstration slide. But one of the features that, that is often used to, to identify them, here's one right here, is the nucleus is very prominent. It tends to have a lot of these little stained things that maybe represent a, I don't know, clock face or, or kind of a cartwheel shaped thing. But the other thing that, that is used is this, this, this shadow right here, or this negative shadow essentially. Just outside the nucleus, there's a space that seems to be non-pigmented. And, and this is called the Golgi shadow. The Golgi apparatus occupies the space, and they tend to have a very large Golgi apparatus. And so when stained, that actually leaves behind this, this kind of negative shadowy area. So again, these are plasma cells. They're associated with, with our immune system antibodies, um, but we won't ask you to find them, but you should be able to identify them, um, and we'll, we'll try to set up a demonstration slide for that. The, the second type of loose connective tissue that we're going to have you learn about would be the adipose tissue or fat tissue. Now, this slide here is going to look more familiar in, in, in a later lab, but this is the skin. From here to the surface, this is going to be the epidermis. Um, and you probably could tell me right now the type of ET, um, but if not, just realize that there are a lot of cell layers here. And if we could look closely, these would be very thin cells at the surface. And so we would call this stratified squamous ET. This down below is also part of our skin. And this is a layer called the dermis that we're going to be learning a lot more about later. And even below that, you'll notice that there is then a transition into a type of tissue that has a lot of loose, almost empty filled vacuoles. And this is often referred to as our hypodermis, or this can be the subcutaneous fat layer. And so if we look closely at this, we're going to start to see a lot of cells that have a very unique feature. The cell, for the most part, is filled with these empty vacuoles. Now, the truth is they're not empty in, in, in the cell in an unprepared situation. They would be, they would be filled with lipids or fat. Um, and these are called adipocytes or fat cells. And so fat cells are really unique because they're these big cells. They have a nucleus. They have cytoplasm. But the nucleus and the cytoplasm tends to be pushed to the very edge. And most of the cell is then going to contain this fat-filled vacuole. And so here we have a lot of adipocytes, these very loose, large, fat-filled cells. In addition to the adipocytes, you will also find, at times, fibroblasts, as before. You'll find the fibers. So this stuff in here, these wavy kind of purple bands, this is a lot of collagen. And so collagen is still going to be present. This is connective tissue. It's going to have an extracellular matrix. There's often elastic tissue and reticular tissue or fibers. And so these fibers are all present. It's just really what becomes so obvious and so hopefully easy for you to distinguish would be these large adipocytes. Here's another slide of adipose tissue. Really, really, really large fat cells or adipocytes with large vacuoles filled with fat or lipids and, and just not a lot of extracellular matrix. But where it does exist, you're going to find collagen and elastic tissue and reticular fibers and such. The third type of connective tissue here is going to be referred to as reticular connective tissue. Now, the thing that is defining this type of tissue is the, the prominent fiber, the reticular fiber. And this is the one that I mentioned was uh, um, we were unable to see because of a, a special stain needed. Well, in this case, we are offering you, we're giving you slides that have used this special stain. And so a couple places where you find reticular fibers and reticular tissue in general is in the spleen or the bone marrow, or in this case, the lymph nodes. And, and all of these represent kind of these soft organs. And so reticular fibers, all of these dark stained fibers that you can see in this field of view, you can imagine creates this, this soft skeleton, this nice supportive structure, which then can hold all the other cells in, in their place. Um, so this slide is from a, a lymph node, and lymph nodes, as we'll learn later, are going to have a lot of lymphocytes, a lot of white blood cells um, kind of held together in this nice fibrous network. And so it's the fibers, the reticular fibers that you see all throughout that really define this tissue type. Here's another slide, um, the same tissue types, probably also a lymph node, and we can see just really, really prominent, darkly stained fibers. These are the reticular fibers that make up this kind of soft skeleton that supports some of these soft organs like lymph nodes and, and, and the spleen. Um, and, and so it's in here that you should be able to recognize reticular fibers. That's about it from the slide. 
The next three tissue types are all going to be referred to as dense connective tissue. And, and that it really means that the, the fibers themselves are going to be more densely packed than we've been seeing. And so this next one, th this, this could be from a ligament or a tendon. And this represents the dense regular connective tissue. And, and by dense, we're referring to how densely packed the fibers are. And the regular aspect of that name just to tells us how regularly arranged the fibers are. And so here, we see a lot of really, really, really nice pink fibers that all seem to be parallel. They're all running, in this case, left to right of our screen. And those are all collagen fibers. A lot of densely packed, regularly arranged collagen fibers with then very prominent nuclei that represent the fibroblasts. And so this dense, regular connective tissue is the type of connective tissue that we see in tendons and ligaments and, and other places in the body that we'll learn about, including actually the, the cornea of the eye. Um, and the, 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 the fact that this is a regular, regularly arranged collagen gives this a really strong feature. And so you can think about tendons and ligaments, how strong it is, how hard it is actually to tear them. Um, these are still flexible, so you can bend them kind of up and down, but you're not going to pull them apart very well because of the collagen fibers. The next type of tissue um, is, is going to be dense irregular connective tissue. And really the only difference between dense regular, which we just saw, and dense irregular is how regularly shaped or arranged those collagen fibers are. And so this we saw earlier, this is the skin. And, and this time what I, I want to point out here is, is this area referred to as the dermis. And so we're actually going to look at, at a close-up view of this area. So before we were looking at it for the adipose tissue down below. But now you'll notice that there's a lot of pink tissue that extends a lot of it directly below the epidermis, but then also continues down. That, that pink tissue, when we look closely, is primarily this dense irregular CT. You'll notice there are fibroblasts, or those are the cells that are prominently found throughout connective tissue. But unlike the loose areolar, we see a lot of the pink wavy bands. And this is the collagen. And uh, unlike the slide we just saw, where we had nice parallel running collagen fibers, these are pretty irregular. Some of them are running up and down, some of them left and right. There doesn't seem to be any sort of direction to the angle or, or flow of these fibers. And, and what that means is this tissue is gonna provide a lot of support in all different ways. It can be pulling up and down, left and right, at an angle, and all of that is going to have collagen fibers that can support it, which you can think of as is, is probably pretty important for the support of our skin. And so this dense, irregular connective tissue is going to be defined by the presence of collagen fibers, but are arranged in a more irregular pattern. You should still see the fibroblasts and particularly other cell types given where we are. And then the very last slide we have here, this is our final connective tissue that we're gonna be learning today. And this is elastic connective tissue. And, and really elastic connective tissue is defined by the, the prominent presence of elastic tissue, um, sorry, elastic fibers. And elastic fibers, in this case, have been stained. And these are these wavy black lines that you see throughout this tissue. This is actually the wall of, of the aorta. So the wall of a really, really large artery in our body. And if you think about the aorta, um, it's constantly under high pressure when the heart pumps and then lower pressure when the heart relaxes. And that ability to stretch and accommodate high pressure, but then recoil to accommodate the low pressure is important for cardiovascular health. And it's because, again, this is a very close-up view of the wall of the aorta, it's because of these very regular arranged elastic bundles these bundles of elastic tissue that are existing within the wall of this aorta help the aorta stretch or elastic and then also recoil. And so this is the only slide that we're going to ask you to be able to identify elastic tissue. And it's really these very, very clear black squiggly lines that are the elastic fibers that really define this feature. It's hard to see some of the other things here because of the stain. Um, there's going to be a lot of muscle in this case, smooth muscle between these, and that's simply because of the, the overall structure of arteries is, is primarily smooth muscle and elastic tissue, as we're going to learn later. But for us today, for connective tissue proper, this is going to represent our elastic connective tissue, and the aorta is the one place we see it. So as before, um, use this kind of preparing for lab, um, but in no way this should uh, substitute for the time in lab.